Donald Trump says to kill FISA. He writes in a Truth Social post, it was illegally used against me and many others. They spied on my campaign. Of course, right now there's a debate going on over whether to reauthorize FISA with Speaker of the House Mike Johnson, some establishment Republicans, and the support of the Biden White House trying to get that law to be reauthorized, while many people on both the far right and far left, <laughs> use the put those terms in quotes, saying that this would be a major abuse of Americans' civil liberties to reauthorize this horrible policy. So this is going on right now on Capitol Hill. Um, other people, again, weighing in from all sides of the pol political spectrum. It's, it's the center and the establishment who desperately wants the FBI to still have the ability to engage in this warrantless surveilling. People like Edward Snowden, Glenn Greenwald, Thomas Massey, Justin Amash, all warning against this power. Um, of course, this was something that was used against that one uh, Trump campaign uh, associate, um, pay, uh, Car Carter, Carter Page, Page, I believe was his name. Um, it was used for nefarious purposes. And then there was a whole news cycle about needing to limit FISA abuses because it had ensnared an, you know, Donald Trump. A Donald Trump person yeah. and conservative media was outraged about it. But what about all of the other times it is deployed against regular Americans? Now, this reauthorization bill, according to Thomas Massey and, and others who are upset about it, has a carve out for Congress. If they're going to spy, uh, uh, spy on a member of Congress, they need to get a warrant. And Massey and others, uh, Mar including Marjorie Taylor Greene, we're going to play a clip from her in a minute, say, no, it should just be, it shouldn't be a special extra protection just for co members of Congress, which is an inducement to get them to vote for it, frankly. It should be for all Americans should enjoy the protections that are already in our Bill of Rights, that if they're going to surveil you, sur unreasonable search and seizure, they need to get a warrant. Let's actually play that Marjorie Taylor Green clip and then talk about it. For this yesterday, I sent a letter out uh, to my colleagues yesterday morning. Um, the current discussions in our conference meeting this morning is about FISA, um, but it's pretty clear and obvious and being whispered among the conference. Mike Johnson does not have the support of the conference. Um, the letter that I sent has been well received, and it was basically speaking the quiet part out loud. Um, he's in there urging uh, members to reauthorize FISA. Um, and I don't think he has the votes for it right now, uh, is what I'm gathering. Uh, we're going to be working on this. Uh, we do not believe in warrantless spying on the American people, especially when this bill uh, carves out the ability for Congress to be notified when a member of Congress is going to be uh, uh, looked at through the FISA court. Um, that's completely unfair. The same thing should apply for the American people. Um, but Mike Johnson doesn't have the trust of the conference, and that's become very clear. So I'm glad to see people expressing skepticism of reauthorizing this, but we'll see. Yeah, I've been wanting to talk about this all week. Edward Snowden has been really ringing the alarm bell, trying to get people to focus on what's happening. The argument has been that establishment members of Congress on both sides of the aisle have tried to kind of slip this through under the radar. Um, but some of the figures that you've mentioned, along with um, Jim, jo Jim Jordan and others, have been ringing the alarm. Jim Jordan pointed out at the, at the hearing yesterday that uh, FISA database searches that have violated the rules have happened 278,000 thousand times. So while someone like Donald Trump might have zeroed in on this because he was personally affected, this should not be perceived as a partisan issue. And in fact, harm might be done to, frankly, the cause of allowing this uh, infringement on Fourth Amendment rights to expire by associating it, frankly, too closely with some of these um, uh, MAGA world figures. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene has pointed out on Twitter as well that there is this specific carve out for Congress members, which seems to evince some understanding that this is a, an infringement and a violation, at least when it comes to the people who are writing the laws. The question is whether or not the protections that are enjoyed by members of Congress are going to be uniquely enjoyed by them or shared by the rest of the American public. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to my mind, this is something to um, go after the speaker over, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, considering this uh, move to actually uh, to strip him of that of that title based on Ukraine funding again also something I disagree with uh, with Mike Johnson on but this is so clear like ask rank and file Republican conservative voters whether they want these kinds of abuses to be codified into law I mean ask you know ask anybody frankly people know now people distrust 
um, the government on these matters don't think it should have this power. It obviously violates the Constitution, frankly, in my view. And it is something that you're a, a Tea Party in the next generation of Republicans was ostensibly brought to Congress to fix. And this is why, you know, tremendous frustration sets in uh, on uh, among Republicans, among conservatives, when they're told we're going to, you know, we're going to elect these people and then they're going to stop the deep state, they're going to protect American civil liberties, and, it does, and then the Patriot Act gets reauthorized and FISA gets reauthorized and we spend more money on uh, national security intelligence spy people and there's more censorship on social media. Like all of that, it doesn't get, it doesn't get any better. So this would be a great place to really hold the line and say, no, this is unconstitutional, it is wrong, it should not, if they want to monitor uh, Americans, they have to get a warrant just like for anything else. Yeah. I mean, it's worth noting, uh, apparently during the hearing yesterday as well, Democratic representative from New York, Jerry Nadler, said he could not support the reauthorization of Section 702 without some serious reforms pointing specifically to the idea that a uh, warrant requirement would safeguard American civil liberties without compromising intelligence agencies' ability to protect national security. Um, and so there is some Democratic bond in here on the idea that this is not something that should be pushed through a attached to one of these must-pass bills. This is not an issue that people need more time on to debate whether or not it should expire or not. The discussion has been had, and it does look like the consensus has built to a significant degree, and I don't, I don't, it doesn't look from, yeah. uh, in this yeah. moment, like it's going to be renewed. And I think it's important to point out, too, so the FISA system originated as a response to Nixon stuff and was actually intended as a way to give um, law enforcement a tool to, to, uh, to investigate other, like, other, me like, members of the government, actually. Mm. It was, it was intended to be inward focusing mm. for gov for accountability of government mm. officials but after September 11th it got applied in this you know this is part of how we fight terrorism is to just endlessly surveil all Americans so it shows you how a tool that was initially I, I think frankly genuinely well intended to prevent yeah. government abuse ended up being deployed against uh, the citizenry. Yeah, and it's worth noting the push. There's some pushback from conservative figures as well. It's not just this is not a right-left issue as no. you pointed to, and it's not even like a center extreme issue because I wouldn't a center rather fringe issue because I would hardly call Jerry Nadler yeah. a leftist or anywhere other than the dead center core of the Democratic Party. Um, but for example, uh, Representative uh, Mike Turner of Ohio says that he doesn't agree with this warrant requirement that would uh, protect civil liberties because he doesn't want the government to have to get a warrant to search, quote, Hamas's data. So you can see how this kind of national security argument is being weaponized to infringe upon, frankly, the civil liberties of American citizens. We'll continue to cover this fight as it evolves. Stick around. More rising for you right after this.